All right, MMA Junkie Radio delivering another superstar goes. We got the UFC flyweight champion Valentina Shevchenko on board. How you doing, Valentina? Doing good. Doing good. Spending my um, home time like with quality. <laughs> exactly. And I see you got the blonde hair back. You were doing auburn and brown a few months ago, right? Uh, you know, it's kind of lightning. Lightning here. It's like kind of uh, make it look lighter, but it's still with a red tone. <laughs> oh, okay. It has we some kind of reddish. <laughs> we have the same problem here, except it makes our hair look white sometimes. Yeah, if it looks great. <laughs> fun, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. And, uh, um, do you plan on, on switching the look from time to time? Is that just you know something? That, what is that something you did for maybe the movie with Halle Berry, or 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 you just wanted to change that look when you did it originally? The particular and the beginning of my look, what it was like, uh, very very red. It was yes, it because because of the movie, because of my participation there, and because of my character, and. Um, uh, but after all, I liked it. But uh, for me, it's like a little bit hard to keep that color because, um, uh, you know, um, it's like when you, uh, with a time, you see the blonde hair and it's like messing up with the red hair. It's make me like upset every time. That's why I decide to keep it kind of... Um, a little bit red, a little bit blonde, some kind of between, probably strawberry blonde, but I didn't decide. I just went and said, wait, and when the quarantine will be over, and I will start to like uh, see the options that I have for now. I will keep it as it is without like no changes, doing nothing. <laughs> okay, well, my next question was just going to be would you ever do anything really crazy like purple or green just to have fun with it, I guess? Oh, no, no, no. Uh, I think like it's more um, teenager spirit to mm -hmm. make it crazy things and like to have the all experiments in the world with yourself, with your body, with your like appearance, with your look, with your everything. But once you are find your style and like things that you like, you don't have to uh, have so many experiments on yourself. And I really enjoy myself how I look, but uh, small changes, it's uh, not the big ones. And um, I will keep the, my strategy without too much crazy things going on. <laughs> okay. And then one other thing, and then we'll get into a little bit of MMA. Uh, you're somebody that well, even when you're training or when you're not training, you travel. How does this feel for you? We've asked a lot of people, what's it like to be cooped up inside? And we've heard a lot of answers from people that must spend most of their times with their family and at home or for whatever reasons. But you really are somebody that just logs the miles. So what, what's that feel like to be cooped up? And will there be a hesitancy to jump on planes other than when you need to, just because again, what we're dealing with, you know, the, either the social distancing or just the fact that we're, we're, we're all keeping our space a little bit when, you know, when we have to. You know, from um, one point, I am very lucky because I am traveling with my family and <clears throat> that's why it's allowed me to spend my family time during um, travel. So it's it's a good part. But of course, it's kind of like, you know, um, one thing that you cannot travel, another thing that you um, also cannot do the things for the activities that you uh, used to do all the time, for example, go to the shooting range, go to the lake, go to the nature. You cannot do as much as uh, like you did it, you, you used to, to do it. And this is more that affecting me. And one thing more that um, after my surgery, I cannot do like all the exercise, all the physical activities that I am I was doing all this time. And this is more affecting me because I have to see still and do nothing at home. Just like uh, my um, other like things that I love to do, but it's more no physical activities. It's like 
statics. It's just learning and practicing on the same seat. And this is what's more affecting me, definitely. And it's hard. It's, it's very hard. But I'm looking at this like a little bit more positive because it's going to end. It's going to end soon, I hope so. And I will go back to my like normal lifestyle and do everything that I um, enjoy to do. Valentina, I was thinking about you a couple of days ago. You know, once we're talking about Fight Island and all that stuff, I started thinking, well, those are two of Valentina's favorite things, islands and fighting, mm -hmm. and they're combining it into one. Was oh, that you do. Years when you heard that? Yes, from the very, very first second when I heard about the island, it was already my favorite idea. <laughs> Yes, I definitely would love to fight there and I definitely would love like to have my um, fight that we have to we have to delay to postpone it because it's supposed to be in June in Australia. Now I hope it's going to happen sometime in uh, end of August. And uh, why not? Why not on the island? That's why it can be like double great things and definitely i love it idea of the island and um i love it because um on the island it's gonna be everything that fighter need right because it's gonna be built especially for the ufc fight for uc fighters that's why we will have all facilities that we need and it's gonna be very easy to train very easy to uh like do everything that's why uh, as i like mentioned before i would love to try uh, to have my training camp over there before the fight to fight there and actually stay and recover after the fight on the island because i imagine it's going to be super beautiful and super nice place valentina now some of the details that have been coming out whether it's fight island or the ufc apex it seems like the ufc wants to be very active uh some shows that we thought would be one week after another could actually be days in between. You're a fighter that loves to fight. And, you know, right now there's a target on your back. People want to fight you. There's a lot of people that want to fight you. Should you come out of a fight, let's just say at Fight Island, and you come out okay with no injuries, would you want to just turn it around and within a week or two weeks just do it again? Week or two weeks? I think week or two, it's uh, too soon week or two it's um because uh one thing it's a recover from injury another thing it's um a recover from all uh preparation and mental all this pressure that you are uh, usually having during the fight week and uh, training camp i think mm, realistically week or two it's too soon but from other side if you are feeling good and you are so, like seem like you're feeling good. Why not? Right? Because uh, it's uh, one fight and another fight. But sometimes you just want to enjoy a little bit time to time off and recover all your energy back. And uh, sometimes you think probably about um, a month, month and a half ideal ideal time for get back because we are not speaking about just regular fight we are speaking about the title fight because title fight it's uh, more uh, pressure on you it's more things that you have to be worried about uh, if it be uh, just like a regular fight why not it could be like even not after one week if next day if you're feeling good but title fight it's a little bit different story it's um it's put a little bit more pressure on you and also responsibility on you. That's why ideally, if it's happening like so frequent, it's uh, going to be not less than one month. Could a situation like the one we're in uh, almost give you a little bit more of an advantage than other fighters? And I say that because you look at some other fighters that belong to big teams and they share coaches and and big training rooms. And right now they're gonna be forced to just work with themselves, their coach, be very isolated. This is something that you've done for quite a long time. You know, you train a lot with your sister. Uh, Pavel is always around you, right? So this is kind of not gonna be too different for you with the exception of maybe you can't go into the UFC PI, right? But other than that, um, do you feel like you need to change very much in your mindset or training? 
Um, definitely, it's, it's not affecting me that much as, for example, other fighters. But uh, from other side, it's yes, it's affecting because I need to use um, not just one training partner. I used to use uh, like two, three training partners in the session because uh, this is what I do, combining the styles. And like um, for me, it's necessary to have all these styles going around me to be able to switch this chip very fast and um, like um, prepare when I fight, for example, with this opponent, I know what to expect from him or her. And when I switch it like in the training session for another one, I have to be able to switch my mind to another work to another uh, fight uh, strategy can uh, I, I can say like this and this is yes this is uh, can affect because uh, now you will have only one training partner in the best um, case of scenario to, uh, two training partners but definitely it's not affecting me that much as other fighters because this is kind of lifestyle lifestyle that I had um, like training with one team and it's like all about my um, internal preparation and all these things and yes definitely it's um, for me it's not difficult because I'm the person who adapt <laughs> for any I, 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 I realize that I am the person who can adapt for any circumstances that it's for front of you i'm not the one who oh it's happening and i don't know what's gonna i gonna do and i just sit here all in depression and don't know what to do no i start to see the other um like possible possible like situation or like um, moves what i can to do and how i can deal with this i just start to work towards this way straight Valentina, so I wanted to see if you could just reveal a little bit about the injury. You know, we've already heard a few things like you mentioned there was already a surgery. You mentioned there's a rehab going on. I saw another interview where we knew it was a leg injury. The good thing is it doesn't seem to be like the type of injury that holds a fighter out for a whole year. I don't want to call it minor because every injury I'm sure sucks for fighters. But what, what can you tell us about it? And and um, you are saying that by by August you could actually compete in the octagon, correct? Yes, my my hope is be able to get back into the fight, is actual fight end of August. My hope is everything going smoothly and correctly. I will be ready for this time. Okay. Uh, as far as the injury, leg in, leg injury, is that accurate? What we're hearing? I mean, was that knee, ankle, or or actual? It's a knee. Yes, it's a knee. It's ligament. Oh, wow. Okay. But you already had your surgery and everything's already being, you're already yeah. rehabbing. Yes, it's already rehabbing. I'm three weeks uh, after the surgery. So everything going smooth, my recovery, everything like um, um, I get in strength every day back. And yeah, just on my way back, I'm ready for uh, put a little bit more power and everything that to, I have to put on my leg to get it back. But yes, I definitely will do everything to recover my strength. Was that a training injury or just a random like injury outside of training? Oh, you know, it's happened like um, it was fight injury. Uh, in the fight, it's happened and I felt it. But you know, I'm that kind of person that uh, if you have injury, you are like, okay, I hope I take anti inflammatory pills, and after a couple of days, you feel better and you continue your training, right? So it happened during the fight, but it's after the fight, we like uh, don't have. I'm sorry. And we don't have the same uh, like intensity of the training, and definitely you start to feel yourself better, mm -hmm. and you, of course you put yourself in more um, uh, powerful trainings, and then it happened worst. And then I uh, already had uh, this like decision to have the um, surgery because my doctors they told me that. It can it can heal by itself. It can, but um, 
it will take more time to recover and there is no guarantee that it will heal all the way back with the same power and the same strength that's why they recommended to have the surgery that's why the um like the recover time it will be like a little bit shorter and you will have um, more um possibility that you will be back uh, the same as you were before the injury okay so yeah not to probe any further but at least it sounds like no major tear, maybe a strain or a slight tear. And that's why you have this timeline. It was a tear. It was a tear. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So August seems so soon compared to what I've heard of other fighters. Do you just have good abilities to recover? Or no, it, it's it's because it's because it's not ACL, it's MCL. Got it. Okay. <laughs> if anybody can recover early, you know, it's somebody like Valentin. I think Tony Ferguson once did a five-month recovery from yeah. like nine months. So I wouldn't put it past you because you're so laser focused on your career and, and you're always in, in great shape and everything. I, I think it's all uh, also it depends on the kind of injury you have yeah. and um, like definitely if it's ACL it will take much more time to recover. It doesn't uh, doesn't matter how dedicated you are, how strong you are, how want you recover uh, like uh, faster. It's just like um, amount of time. It's not enough. Your body cannot heal that fast. But uh, it's about ACL. But MCL, it's another type of injury. And uh, like if you have the injury, it's uh, like the one you can heal uh, sooner. What have you done during this time aside from training or rehab? Is there anything that you've done that's been fun during this quarantine? Like any projects around the house or playing, you know, games, learning an instrument, just anything that's random? Yeah, yeah. I did a lot of like fun stuff and I'm doing like all the time everything that makes me happy. So I play ukulele, I learn Thai, I continue to learn Thai. I um I do my shooting trainings, but not going to the range, but uh, like uh doing exercise just in dry to do home exercise to make this uh, like physical motions to keep the same smooth and um, i start to learn about sailing so after everything it's uh, this will be over i hope to go onto the water and practice my sailing skills wow it's pretty interesting yeah and when it comes to sailing would you be like a solo sailor or or with a group of people I, I would think that I will start with a group of people, but I I don't think that I will do it by myself alone. I don't like to be alone at all. No, I don't. I'm not that one person who wants to stay alone and just focus on yourself, like inside yourself. No, I want um, to have company every time with me. I need someone to share my emotions at this moment because if you are alone, you're feeling like you want to tell someone about how you feel since like there is no one and it's frustrating. I need someone every time with me. That's why I I'm never alone. <laughs> and would you ever try and, uh, like, I know you guys go to Lake a lot here in Las Vegas. Do you ever have goals of, like, conquering, like, I want to sail from Los Angeles, Catalina Island, or is it just something you want to do recreationally? It's hard to tell right now. It's very hard to tell right now what I want to do in the future. Right now, I just started. Right now, I just starting to see how it works and what I can do and how it's uh, going to look like. I will start like step by step and see how the journey, where journey will lead me. So let's see probably in a couple of years where I will be. I don't know. Probably I will like go and sail all over the world. I don't know. I don't know if for now it yet i cannot say it because right now i'm thinking only about my uh, fighter career <laughs> you Shevchenko sisters are very adventurous I, I i gotta admit that um i want to ask you a question that i would ask anybody honestly do you guys ever i mean i know you can't probably answer on behalf of your sister but do you ever have a fear of like all these adventures do, do you have a fear of dying some people just don't have a fear of dying like they feel like they've lived every day of their life and then others just will never skydive or they'll never do you know certain things because they do have fears I, I think i sit in the middle i'm older now so i probably my adventure days are over but what about you interesting question and you know like it's um 
actually definitely not my favorite question <laughs> same as, like when you are asking fighters about injuries it's yeah. not the favorite one it's definitely not, not and speaking about like this kind of thing it's uh, I, I i don't know what what to answer i don't know what to answer what um chance change it's gonna make do you have fear or you don't have fear yeah will it change something in your life will it be no do you think so i don't think so i don't think that you definitely have to think about it you just have to think and focus and about and about quality of your life and what's gonna happen tomorrow you don't know you just hope that everything's gonna be good you just hope it and but you don't know i hope it's gonna be everything good yeah and we're trying to prevent everything like crazy thing because if you are like saying oh i'm not afraid nothing i don't i i will go and like drive like a crazy or like uh run in the crazy places or do crazy stuff it's of course it's uh, increase your this risk right mm -hmm. but of course i'm trying to prevent all these like stupid and crazy things but um i don't know what's gonna happen i hope everything's good it's gonna be good this is what I really know. Yeah, I guess for me, I want to run with the bulls in Pamplona, Spain, and I want to jump out of an airplane and do skydiving. But I notice every year that I blow out an extra candle on the birthday cake, <laughs> I start to get more chicken, you know? <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's it's funny, but someday I believe you would be like, uh, why not? Why not at this time, right? <laughs> why not to do it right now? <laughs> you know, right. hard. George, you know, it's a good start, but you can probably try indoor skydiving. It's a good start to um, build your confidence and get rid of your fear and start your way towards it because you cannot do it like straight to jump from the plane and fly, right? You have to prepare yourself to expect what to, to know what to expect. And I would recommend if you really want it, go indoor skydive. <laughs> I'm gonna do it one day. All right, Valentina, great catching up with you. And I'm glad that uh, you're already on the road to recovery. And sometime this summer, it looks like you'll be fighting. And, and I, it appears Jojo Calderwood will still be your opponent. I can't wait for it. You're doing great. You defended your belt three times. Everybody loves your fighting style. You have so many fans. I congratulate you on all your success. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, guys. As always, it's very uh, my big pleasure to speak with you now. When I don't have the like many people to speak with, it's so good to speak with you over the internet at least. And I hope to when everything is gonna be over, we will meet each other again in the studio and of course like uh, to share all of this like our emotions, how we deal with all these crazy things. And definitely, I look forward to this time. <laughs> Dude. All right, champ. Have a good day. Thanks again for the time. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye.